Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. Maybe you've heard that real estate is a fantastic investment. What you heard is true, my friend. But, like, your local market really isn't that great to invest in right now. So today we talk about how to buy an investment property long distance. First, a quick word from our sponsor. A credit union that offers Bitcoin? Give me five! (laughs) For a limited time only, get $5 of free Bitcoin through the Southland Credit Union app. Enrollment is quick and easy, there's no hidden fees, and you can conveniently fund Bitcoin purchases directly from a Southland account. Claim your free Bitcoin today by going to thecollegeinvestor.com slash Southland. Bitcoin accounts and services provided by NIDIG, not NCUA insured. Restrictions apply to Bitcoin bonus. See terms. And don't forget to check out thecollegeinvestor.com slash Southland to sign up. All right, so let's get to it. So, you know, a great rental real estate portfolio, it's just going to continue to spin off positive cash flow, also allow investors to benefit from easy financial leverage. Historically, this asset class beats inflation and provides exposure to an asset with underlying value. But, depending on where you live, finding houses that make financial sense in your local market, yeah, might be next to impossible. Soaring home prices and moderate rents can lock some investors actually out of the market. But with so many real estate markets on fire, would-be investors may want to look outside your city limits or even state to find your first or next investment property. Buying a rental house from a distance can pose some difficulties for you, though. Rental properties may come equipped with leaky toilets, difficult tenants, unexpected vacancies, And addressing these problems from out of town, that's going to be a headache and a nightmare if you don't have the right support. With help from our partners at Roofstock, we're going to break down what you should know before you buy a rental property across state lines. By the way, if you want to take a look at an investment real estate that's for sale right now, you can sign up for Roofstock at thecollegeinvestor.com and start browsing around today. All right, so first, Let's take a look at when you should consider long-distance real estate investing. Rental property ownership can provide stable income, but it's not an asset for everybody. Layering in long-distance real estate ownership adds to the complexity. But investing in a long-distance investment property may actually make sense, especially if these four factors apply to you. Your local market has a low rental income to property value ratio. The ratio of monthly rent to the property value is well below 1%. You don't have a specific advantage, like home repair skills, ability to drive for dollars, etc. That would actually allow you to find excellent deals locally. Despite unfavorable local conditions, you want to own and maintain physical rental real estate as part of your portfolio. You're willing to put in the work to find a team of people who can help you manage your property from afar. So rental properties are actually houses, or maybe even apartments. They're big, unwieldy assets that need to be physically maintained. As the owner of that asset, it's up to you to keep the asset in shape. That means you need to know who to call when the HVAC breaks in July and when the caulk around the tub starts to leak. On top of that, you'll need to find tenants and make sure they pay their rent. (laughs) Over time, rental properties may yield income with less time investment but it takes a lot of work to find and buy a property. Then it takes more work to find tenants. Then it takes more work to find a team of people who can provide services to the property to keep it in shape. And even if you outsource it to a property manager, it takes work to find one you can trust. With all the upfront work, the investor's reward is steady cash flow. Rental properties rarely provide massive returns except when investors use leverage and invest in many, many properties. It's not a bad asset class. In fact, it's actually my favorite. But buying real estate and selling it after a few major repairs is a recipe for lost money. Think carefully before you leap into real estate investing, especially if you plan to buy at a distance. Remember, even in expensive markets, you might be able to house hack to gain exposure to rental real estate. If you're new to the term house hack, 
We have a link inside this article at thecollegeinvestor.com that explains everything you need to know. So now let's go on to how to buy an investment property long distance. If you do feel, after all that said, that long distance investing is right for you, the process will involve several steps. So here's what you'll need to do to find the right property, purchase it, and then fill it with tenants to begin receiving income. Number one, research, research, research. Most people who want to own rental real estate want to own more than one. Multiple doors mean more cash flow. Often, real estate investors who invest from a distance choose one metro area to focus their investments. Focusing on one market offers many practical advantages. It allows investors to understand the market dynamics in the area. Focused investors can develop a local network of excellent agents, real estate agents, property management companies, service people, and contractors. Figuring out where you want to invest made it be the most important first step in buying real estate from a distance. When studying regions for investments, though, real estate investors will want to understand the general real estate climate. They can study things like what are the major draws to the area? Is it universities, specific industries, hospitals, schools, etc.? Who rents in this area? Students, retirees, families with kids, all that stuff. What is the ratio, the ratio, I should say, between monthly rent and typical property values in the area? Is the area stable, growing, or shrinking? What are the employment prospects for most people in the area? How do property taxes compare to property values? By studying these market dynamics, you can feel more confident that you can find profitable deals that will stand the test of time. Understanding the market can also prevent you from snapping up a $72,000 house, only to find out that it is highly overvalued for the area. If you want a great guide to get started, you can check out Roofstock Academy. You can learn how to master turnkey rental properties online, and this course goes well with actually using their platform for purchasing property. I also like this guide from Bigger Pockets that explains how to do market analysis that you can find that link as well at thecollegeinvestor.com. And number two, start to build your network. Okay, so when you own property from a distance, you're going to need a team of people who can help you find, finance, and maintain your real estate. Finding quality connections from a distance can be a challenge. It can be a challenge to do it locally. But companies like Roofstock actually make it easy. You can always find your own network as well, but here are a few groups of people that you'll want to find. Other small real estate investors in the area. They may seem like your competition, but I've actually found that fellow investors offer the best connections to service people like plumbers, electricians, cleaning crews, pest control, HVAC repair people, insurance providers, and other service providers. Good inspectors. A good inspector can help you understand how long it will be until critical systems need to be replaced. They will dramatically reduce the risk associated with a house long distance. Real estate agents or local turnkey providers. As a distance real estate investor, you'll want to work with local real estate agents or even turnkey companies to find properties. Don't just use a Zillow real estate agent. Instead, seek out agents who specialize in rental property acquisitions. If you use a turnkey company, look for reviews or ask to speak to former clients and customers. One national turnkey company is, of course, Roofstock, and they have a great selection of inventory to choose from. Lenders. Mortgage lenders for long-distance investment properties don't necessarily need to be local, but you're going to want to look for lenders that understand rental real estate and, by the way, steer clear of loan companies that only issue mortgages for owner-occupied housing. Insurance brokers that deal with landlords. Buying insurance for rentals is not as easy as calling a broker and asking them to compare rates. A lot of insurance companies only insure landlords under certain conditions. It's taken me a few years to find an insurer that will consistently offer a reasonable rate for my long-distance rental property. Service providers. Rental property owners need to know plumbers, pest control, HVAC, all of it. Issues with plumbing, pests, or heating and air conditioning can quickly lead to dissatisfied tenants and a whole lot of property problems. 
You might be able to find local providers through the Nextdoor app or through online communities like the Bigger Pockets forums. Property Managers A good property management company will field tenant calls and dispatch service providers as needed. They may handle aspects of the vacancy process, like giving tours. Unfortunately, a lot of property managers want clients with large portfolios. They might specialize in apartment management. A person with one or two houses might find it difficult to locate a property manager to serve their needs. Roofstock, however, can refer you to a preferred property manager that is vetted and monitored. Number three, this is the only the third step in all of this. <laughs> Line up funding. You're going to need to save some money for a down payment, typically 20 to 25 percent, and that's the minimum, and a repair fund for a rental property. You're also going to want to figure out your preferred lending scenario. A lot of real estate investors use a HELOC on their residence to buy the rental property and then mortgage it later to pay the loan back. This works well if you live in an expensive real estate market, but it can also backfire if you're unable to secure a fixed-rate mortgage on the new property. Other investors try to buy and rehab with cash and take out a mortgage after the repairs are complete. Still, others prefer to use traditional mortgages to buy. You might see some real estate investors talk about hard money loans. These are typically private loans with fairly high interest rates. They tend to be appropriate for people looking to fix and flip, but are not typically a good long-term choice for rental property buyers. The great thing about using a platform like Roofstock is that they have lending partners on the platform that they can refer you to, and they're also familiar with what you're doing. This can make a transaction pretty seamless. Number four, look for properties. Once you know your market, have a team, and have your funding, Ah, you can finally start looking for deals. Most of your searching will be done online, of course, and you may never see a house in person. You're likely going to rely on online images and video to actually see the property. Some prospective landlords will make a trip to look for properties, and this can make a lot of sense, especially if you've never been to an area. By seeing properties in person, you can get a better sense of what $100,000 will get you in the market. The trip may cause you to reevaluate what you want to find. Roofstock makes it really easy to look for properties. You can just search their website by area, type of property, price, and so much more. All right, now step number five, make an offer. This is kind of the fun part. When you find a property that seems to meet your criteria, you can make an offer on the property. A lot of investors like to have an inspection contingency clause, allowing them to back out for any or no reason following an inspection. On the Roofstock platform, oh, that is so easy to make an offer. Just click a button. And step number six, buy the property. So thanks to COVID-19, buying properties digitally is no longer a major problem. Most documents can be e-signed or signed in front of a notary. Be sure to call your title company or real estate attorney before wiring any money. Wire transfer fraud can be a major source of lost money. So take a lot of precautions. And step number seven, this is the last step. Find tenants and maintain the property. Once the property is yours, you can fill it up with tenants and start collecting that rental income. Of course, you also become responsible for paying the loan and maintaining the property. Keep careful tabs on your profit and loss since it can be easy to overspend on capital investments or to maybe even underspend on regular maintenance activities. Careful tracking can help you become a better real estate investor as you define your approach. So, the question is, after all of that, is long-distance real estate investing for you? Buying real estate takes a ton of upfront work to build a network and to procure a property. But the work can pay off, and pay off huge in the long run even if you have to leave your market to find a property that works. If you're willing to put in the effort, you may be able to build up a modest portfolio of rentals that provide income to fund your lifestyle. Retire early, maybe? Just remember, an out-of-state property is still a house. It requires upkeep, and you won't easily be able to DIY a repair when you're like 18 hours away.
If you're ready to start browsing properties today, you can check out Roofstock. We have a link, everything else right there for you at thecollegeinvestor.com. Just copy and paste the title of this podcast right into the search bar and you'll find us. You can also take a look at our social media. We're everywhere. We'd love to get to know you better and help you along in your journey. Just look for us at The College Investor. Thanks so much for stopping by today and we'll talk to you again real soon.